Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of our project team, led by Dr. Juan M. Pulhin, I am excited to share with you highlights of our research entitled Enhancing Resilience Through Capacity Building in LCCAP Formulation in the Province of Aurora, Philippines. With funding from APN, the project showcased LCCAP, or the Local Climate Change Action Plan, where 16 experts from the College of Forestry and Natural Resources, University of the Philippines, Los Baños, were tapped to work with the local government of Aurora in the development of science-based local climate change action plans. The APN project ran for three years, from July 2017 until January 2020. The Philippines is one of the countries most at risk to climatic threats and weather-related events. You name it, we probably have it. Typhoons, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, flooding due to heavy rains, to name a few. Natural hazards result to loss of lives and costly damage to properties. From 2010 to 2019, damages due to natural extreme events and disasters amounted to 463 billion pesos. However, the country has come a long way in terms of response, particularly the passage of the Climate Change Act of 2009, also known as the Republic Act or RA 9729. This law, signed 12 years ago, was created to strengthen climate change governance in the country in compliance with international frameworks. More importantly, RA 9729 established the Climate Change Commission as a policy-making body mandated to coordinate, monitor, and evaluate programs and action plans related to climate change. Section 14 of the Climate Change Act mandated the local government units, or LGUs, as frontline agencies for climate change action. 1,489 municipalities and 145 cities nationwide would need to prepare this action plan. This APN project supported the above national priorities. It generally aimed to enhance climate resilience by developing the capacity of the LGU personnel at the provincial and municipal levels by involving them in the actual preparation of their respective LCCAPs. The project's plans, programs, and activities were guided by four specific objectives. First is to capacitate the LGU personnel on the science, impacts, and responses of climate change and the necessary tools and skills needed in the preparation of LCCAP. Second is to assess the vulnerability, risks, and impacts in the eight municipalities using updated climate models, GIS, and participatory methods in partnership with the LGU personnel and other important stakeholders. Third is to formulate appropriate local climate change adaptation programs, projects, and activities to reduce climate risks and enhance the resilience of Aurora. And lastly, is to enhance the resilience of services from ecosystems and social structure slash human security to different climate risks. The province of Aurora, located on the east central side of Luzon, faces the Pacific Ocean. It has no barriers to shield the landscape, and it's close to 230,000 residents from typhoons coming from the east. Aurora is the least populated province in Region 3. Communities living in about 325 hectares of land are highly dependent on natural resources, which are adversely affected by floods, droughts, earthquakes, and landslides. With the various climate hazards, Aurora is one of the country's priority targets in climate change adaptation and considered vulnerable to shocks and disasters. Aurora province has a rugged terrain as it is surrounded by the Sierra Madre, which is the longest mountain range in the Philippines. It is politically subdivided into eight municipalities, Baler, Dilasag, Dingalan, Maria Aurora, Casiguran, Dinalungan, Dipaculao, and San Luis. Of the total land area, Kasiguran covers about 61,191 hectares and is the largest among the municipalities, while Baler covers the smallest land area of about 11,252 hectares. 
Seven municipalities are categorized as coastal towns and one of those, Maria Aurora, is inland. These eight municipalities are further disaggregated into 151 barangays, in which Maria Aurora has the most number with 40 barangays and Dinalungan the least with nine. Before I proceed further, let me share with you what SIDRA and LCCAP is all about in a nutshell. The Climate Disaster Risk Assessment, or SIDRA, is a requirement towards the formulation of the LCCAP. Guided by six steps and a set of matrices, the SIDRA framework consists of identifying the different hazards and hazard-prone areas in the municipality. LCCAP, on the other hand, is the action plan formulated by local governments to address climate change concerns. It includes identification and prioritization of adaptation and mitigation strategies and development of a monitoring and evaluation system. In essence, the LCCAP describes how LGUs plan to respond to the impacts of climate change and mainstream them into local development plans. Both SIDRA and LCCAP provide the scientific and legal platform for climate change mitigation and adaptation in the Philippines. The project officially started in Baler Aurora on September 25, 2017. The project overview was presented and the expected outputs were discussed among the provincial and municipal officials. A series of consultation meetings, training activities, workshops, and write shops for the technical working groups or TWGs of the eight municipalities and the province representatives were held from July 2017 to December 2019 until such time that the LCCAP was completed. An institutional capacity assessment survey was also designed and administered to the TWG members and 97% of respondents participated. The last step of the project documented the experiences, results, outcomes, and lessons learned. The road to enhancing resilience through capacity building in LCCAP formulation in Aurora started well. Both the provincial government's leadership and UPLB crafted an enabling environment geared towards providing solutions and are supportive of accomplishing the project goal. On top of the APN funds, Additional resources were provided by the provincial government of Aurora that led to an expansion of the scope of capacity building activity to include the eight municipalities. A technical working group was also formed composed of heads of offices such as agriculture, environment, social welfare, health, and engineering. Acknowledging that the existing capacities and that completing the SIDRA cannot be done in just one training, the UPLB team assigned a project member per municipality to oversee the completion of SIDRA and integration of the municipal LCCAPs into the provincial LCCAP. It was agreed that UPLB would facilitate the LCCAP process through trainings and other technical assistance while the TWG assumes responsibility for the LCCAP's completion. With the mobilization of human resources, the influx of additional funds, and presence of an enabling environment, the project team moved on to a series of activities such as trainings on participatory risk and vulnerability assessment, updating of climate models, GIS, participatory methods, as well as gender analysis to complete and complement the six-step CEDRA process. Faced with challenges, such as lack of technical capacity to prepare maps, changes in staff composition, applicability of the indicators, among other things, led to a review of the CIDRA accomplishments. The project team found that the municipal TWGs are remarkably behind the set and that the set of matrices in CIDRA was barely filled. At most, the TWGs only have the ecological profile of its municipality as part of the report. Concerned with the minimal progress in SIDRA in relation to the upcoming LCCAP tasks, the project team identified the major obstacles and recalibrated its strategies. Part of the adjustment was assigning a project staff to each of the eight municipalities to help. 
The team also reviewed the SIDRA matrices and developed indicators for exposure, sensitivity, and adaptive capacity assessment for the different systems of interest, a task previously assigned to the TWG. Also, rating scales and equations for vulnerability and risk values were designed and embedded into the SIDRA matrices. 2018, the second year of project implementation, finally marked the completion of SIDRA matrices and the crafting of LCCAP. By this time, the SIDRAs and LCCAPs of the eight municipalities were about 60 to 80 percent complete. The team prepared the SIDRA summary, the risk maps, identified programs and projects to be consistent with vulnerability and risk assessment, and dealt with the varying LGU capacities and levels of completion. Since SIDRA and LCCAP are map-based processes, the availability of datasets in shape file forms was also an extra challenge. As most stories end well, in 2019, and after more than two years of capacity building, the LCCAP from 2019 to 2028 was finally formulated, presented, and adopted. For the fourth and last project objective, the team conducted an institutional capacity assessment survey. 87 TWG members were also the key actors in LCCAP preparation. This part of the project aimed to go beyond compliance and create an enabling environment for adoption, funding, and implementation of the plan through enhanced capacities and commitments of all involved institutions. The process and results were published in the Environmental Research Journal of Elsevier last year. Results of the Institutional Capacity Assessment Survey showed that the municipal and provincial LGUs scored highest and performed better in disaster risk management, namely the capacity to respond, capacity to anticipate risk, and capacity to recover and change. This is not surprising as the Philippines has already set up a protocol for disaster preparation, response, and management through the Philippine Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Act of 2010. It's worth noting that in terms of institutional resilience, capacity to respond ranked first, which is consistent with the current institutional framework that focuses on mitigation, response, and recovery. In contrast, scores for the four characteristics of resilient institutions ranked the lowest. Access rights and entitlement, decision-making processes, application of new knowledge, and information flows. These findings centered on three areas that needs to be improved to enhance institutional resilience towards climate and disaster risks. Improved staffing and human resources, open wider access to financial support from other sources apart from the municipal funds, and improvement and development of database management systems for efficient information retrieval. To share experiences and exchange learnings on LCCAP formulation, the project team met with the University of the Philippines Resilience Institute, another UP unit assisting LGUs for SIDRA and LCCAP compliance. Both units realized the need for a bigger venue and wider audience to tackle the issues and challenges of local climate adaptation. Thus, a technical and policy forum on SIDRA and LCCAP was organized three months after. It was the first of its kind to bring together different agencies to discuss and define each agency's role for the LCCAP mandate, the bottleneck experience, and suggestions to improve the overall process. In conclusion, the project demonstrated that collaborative process is a key approach in building capacity of LGUs for LCCAP development. A formal arrangement through the Memorandum of Agreement guaranteed commitment and accountability of both parties. Technical capacities, particularly for CEDRA, took time and patience to develop. We saw how focused mentoring translated into significant accomplishments but entailed additional work and that looking into LG expectations revealed limitations in data availability and functional knowledge on climate change. While the Aurora LGUs completed the LCCAP, the impediments that the process revealed led to a reconsideration of expected tasks. CIDRA's steep learning curve pointed to the need to focus on mainstreaming scientific assessment results into local plans. 
Although commissioning specialist is an option, a sense of ownership and appreciation of the process is more important than to comply for compliance sake. The LGU's role in achieving climate and disaster resilience is crucial for a hazard-prone country like the Philippines. And finally, climate change adaptation planning by capable LGU advances human security and risk resiliency at the local level. Aurora is such a beautiful province and is said to be a sanctuary of nature's splendor. The research experience we've had highlights the difficult yet promising path to human security and climate risk resilience in the Philippine context. Capacity building initiatives are therefore necessary for this mandate and highlights the crucial role of local government units in achieving climate and disaster resilience. We thank all our partners for giving us the opportunity to serve and learn from the three years of collaborative experience. We hope that our humble and collective efforts in the development of science-based local climate change action plans translated to reduction of climate risks, enhancement of the resilience of the province, and preservation of its abundant natural attractions. Maraming salamat po and have a good day to all.